up, y'all? My name's Johnuel. I play in Tooth Grinder. We're here in Chicago, Illinois at the Bottom Lounge on the Colors 10 Year Anniversary Tour. And uh, I'm going to show you through my rig today. Um, so, basically, I run all my patch changes through this Frackle Audio MFC um, MIDI controller. And I basically use five patches. As you can see, this is my main MIDI, per se, for like most of the rhythms. And I'll throw some multi-delay or some delay for uh, emotional use during the set, whether it comes to a lead or a certain part where I can need that. Um, I also have a, uh, this is trippy clean because there's a lot of phase and flange that I kind of use for the clean sections and attuned diamonds for gold that we play live. Um, and also again, it's kind of like intuitive with what's going on in the crowd in the moment, whether I would use that at any other point in time. Um, for my uh, third patch, uh, it's an old patch name, but uh, it's basically a pre-distorted and pre-clean sound, kind of mixed together that I use on songs like House That Fear Built and a new song we just put out, The Shadow. So it kind of just gives like, just like cuts out a little bit like during the verses and what have you. And um, my fourth patch right here is my main clean. Um, pretty, it's basically modeled off a, a Marshall. So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, like all the effects that I use, whether it's flange, phase, chorus, it's kind of just like intuitive with what's happening, whether the part needs it in a certain moment and what have you. And then my last patch I have is <laughs> the main lead bitty. And uh, I use this a lot for like leads over a verse. And the only difference um, that I use this for is I use Friedman across the board for all my distorted tones. And uh, I like blending this with the Dirty Shirley to kind of get a more brighter sound, I guess you can say. And we kind of get more um, ambience, kind of cut through the mix a little bit more. Whereas opposed to, again, my main patch, I use a Friedman and a DOS metal patch on an Axfex. And uh, it's kind of the way I work that. I use a wah pedal for a couple, a couple parts. This new song we're playing the tile. It kind of has like this Rage Against the Machine feel, so I kind of do that over the riff. And then I use it in a solo in blue as well. Um, and then I also use this Ditto Looper uh, to loop the lead in the shadow, like at the bridge section, to kind of get like a couple different layers going on and, and what have you. And um, take you back here to my rack. It's pretty, pretty small. I'm not running wireless on this tour anymore, unfortunately. Um, so just using cables. It's got the Axfex 2, and, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm actually using Dots Metal and a Plexi 100 rather than a Friedman for that. Um, and then I just got this, uh, this power amp, this Stereo Simulclass 290, which is just great. It's good to have two power, whereas opposed to other power amps I had, like a Matrix or a Crown. Um, I, did, I was kind of steering more towards the, the natural tube sound and kind of mixing that with the, uh, the digital world as well, so. That's my go-to right now, and I love it. I love it a lot, for sure. I'll take you back to my guitars back here. Um, my main guitar I'm playing on this tour is this uh, PRS Custom 24. Um, it's got a beautiful finish on it. Stoked that they had a, one in the, the factory with a Floyd Rose. Like doing a lot of different dive bombs and stuff. Um, this is uh, my Walker guitar, because I'm doppelganger of Gene Wilder, I guess you can say, but um, I love it a lot. It's got the stock DRS pickups, um, 24 frets. Um, yeah, just really admire the finish on this and stoked to finally have a PRS in the lineup. I use the Whammy a lot for like dive bomb sections, like I use that in the, a new song, Futile, and also in House That Fear Built, and a couple different flutter parts, not really too much throughout the set, but again, it's more kind of just like whatever's happening in the moment of the set. Um, I like using this split position right here to open the set with the shadow, kind of give like a different contrast between uh, these two pickups. Um, I don't really mess with the tone knob that much, kind of just like could get a piece of tape and keep it just dialed right there. Um, but other than that, yeah, I, I love this guitar a lot. I used to play a Jackson. RR24 with the Floyd Rose, but um, this is kind of fitting more in the direction of the new album and uh, kind of just 
the needs I kind of prefer these days. Strings, yeah. Um, I use uh, Dunlop um, nickel ounce strings. Got a custom set 11, 14, uh, 22, 36, 46, and 56. And uh, we play in drop B. Um, and as opposed to this guitar right here, um, the kind man, uh, this is kind of a one of a kind guitar. This, this cat, Dean Gordon, who I met in the city this summer, was kind enough to let me take this on the tour. And uh, I can't say anything bad about it, really. Um, the access down here is kind of mental. I never had such easy access going down here to the higher register before. And uh, it's just a different guitar you see in the mix, I guess, like on, on this tour. Um, I love the hip shot bridge and hip shot tuners. Although I, I do prefer using a tremolo, um, this thing is really easy to play and it's just kind of got a beautiful, really easy feel. Kind of just fits right on my chest. Um, pretty swell. And I use this guitar in a song called Blue because we drop, in drop B, we take this down to G sharp. So when you do a power chord, you kind of use an octave. and. Um, it's only for one song, but um, these are uh, this is uh, the one as opposed to using seven string. But these are Jim Mc Kelly pickups, Jim McNolly or Jim McNolly pickups out in Canada. They're just like Alnico magnets, and um, they're a bit brighter. They kind of have like a bare knuckle sound to it, which is just pretty hip. I usually use the bridge pickup on these guys. Um, I might go to the neck pickup when I use it in the solo in blue. Um, also use the middle position for the clean part as well. So I kind of use a lot of real estate over here throughout the set, or f for that song, I should say. Um, and yeah, it's it's an awesome guitar. It's a walnut top, roasted maple fretboard, and um, yeah, it's just a it's just a different guitar in the mix because these are ebony fretboards where this is natural finish, so it kind of feels good on the hands. Uh, take you through my backup guitar. Um, if you saw us on the last tour cycle, you'd see me bring this out for blue, or if I had a, a problem with my six string. This guitar kind of covers it all, where I use the same gauges on this um, in drop B, um, and then this is the G sharp, so if a guitar shits out during the set, you can kind of pull this out and use it for both terms. And the only difference is I use a 68 on this uh, this G-sharp and uh, yeah JP7 it's uh, got some road road tear on it but still holds through and I don't really use this uh, um, coil tap that much anymore to kind of get like an acoustic simulation sound um, maybe more preferred where I'm like working in the studio or something like that but not so much on this I kind of like like these where they are just dined out just at 10. I don't really mess with tone control really, um, unless it's with the master. But um, yeah, it's a all rosewood guitar too, or aside from the neck. Um, or I'm, I'm sorry, mahogany. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for stopping by and checking out my rig. Just want to give a shout out to Paul Reed Smith Guitars. I want to give a shout out to Mesa Boogie, um, Orange Amplifiers, Dunlop Strings picks and uh, you can catch us on the rest of the Between the Bear and Me Colors 10 Year Anniversary Tour, Contortionist Polyphia. You can check us out on Spotify, Apple Music, and all those outlets. Uh, we got a new album, Phantom More, coming out November 10th. So keep your ears, ears peeled for uh, some new music coming out and uh, we'll see you on this next tour set coming up. Really stoked to, to get out there again.